Hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. This video is basically a follow up to the DIY NAS build and setup guide I did a week or two ago now and uh, this is kind of just covering some extra information and a bit more of a sort of buyer's guide and a bit more of a, a sort of tutorial on how you pick the parts and where you kind of want to go with your DIY NAS. Now of course if you're someone who just wants a box that you can put some hard drives in and make it work and just kind of do a couple of relatively basic things or even some relatively advanced things especially with some of the new use of Asus Tor or QNAP Synology and all that sort of stuff, NASA's then, uh, this video may not necessarily be for you. This is covering sort of custom uh, systems where you're building the, the system yourself and picking each of the parts rather than picking up something like this Asus Tor NAS that I reviewed and you can check out the review for that, um, you know, as opposed to the, the more sort of uh, DIY version. So with that said, let's get started on how you pick the parts. Now the first thing you really need to make sure that you have the budget for is the hard drives. How much storage space do you need? In my case I had two Seagate Iron Wolf drives which are drives that are specifically designed for NASA's or network attached storage devices if I haven't made that clear already. Uh, so just be careful that you double the amount of space you need. So if you need four terabytes pick up two four terabyte drives. If you need eight terabytes pick up two eight terabyte drives and if you need more than I think 10 or 12 terabytes currently anyway then you're going to need to pick up multiple drives. In fact you're probably going to need three or four drives to be able to fill that capacity. So once you've picked how many drives you need and which drives you're going for, that gives you an idea of how much of your budget you have left to spend on the rest of the system. Now of course, depending on how many drives you have will depend on what sort of enclosure you can get for it. So in my case, I went with a fairly small sort of chassis that could only really hold two or maybe three drives at most. Uh, so that was uh, my understanding because I only had two hard drives to install there. If you have six hard drives, for example, you're gonna need more of a mid or full tower chassis to be able to hold those. And of course, that does mean that you're gonna be able to have a bit more space for other stuff, have better airflow, but means that it's not gonna be a sort of sleeper chassis you can just hide away uh, in your you know, TV stand like I do. Once you have the case sorted, you can then get an idea for what motherboards and processors and all that sort of stuff you want. So generally speaking, if you're going on the budget side of things, then something like the A8 that I recommended in the uh, setup guide video, that's a fantastic uh, chip to go with. It's around about the sort of 50 pound mark and you can pick up motherboards for around about the same sort of price, probably 60 pound mark, especially that A320 board that will work perfectly with it. Uh, it has a couple of display outputs so you can set things up and it has uh, obviously gigabit ethernet built in and it has some uh, you know PCI, uh, PCIe slots so if you wanted to use 10 gigabit networking adapters or anything like that you can install those. Now of course if you're going with an even smaller chassis than I did you might want to pick up an ITX board like the B350 gigabyte board or there's a couple of other B350 options as well. I don't think there's any A320 uh, ICX options just yet but obviously bear that in mind and if you're fancying going on the Intel side, there are some cheaper ITX boards available there too. Next up is choosing your RAM, and that is pretty uh, a pretty important one because if you're using FreeNAS, which is what I personally recommend, FreeNAS uses the ZFS file system, and that file system uses a lot of RAM, especially if you're using a uh, large capacity drive. So if you're in the uh, four terabyte plus range, Personally, I'd recommend uh, at least eight gig, if not 16 gigs of RAM. And of course, if you're in the you know 30 terabyte range or something silly like that, then you're definitely gonna wanna go even higher. The speed of the RAM, especially if you're going with a locked motherboard, probably doesn't make too much of a difference. So you're probably gonna wanna go for higher capacity rather than higher speed here. But of course, if you can pick up some ECC memory, then this could actually be a pretty reliable server for you to run. Uh, and I believe that most of the motherboards, especially on the AMD side of things anyway, do currently support ECC with Ryzen chips you will have to check on each motherboard and especially at some of the the lower end boards you will have to check that those definitely support that if you do want those features but uh, either way it's still a pretty nice option to have available when it comes to the rest of the components like the power supply this is generally going to be a pretty low wattage unit as long as it is a relatively name brand power supply you should be okay I'd personally recommend 300 watts or up just in case you want to add any extra uh, features or anything and because generally speaking if you're in the sort of 300 watt category then as uh, the, that power supply degrades over time you're going to obviously lose some of that wattage and while your system especially if you're going with one of those sort of A8 chips and basically nothing else you're probably only going to be drawing 50 to 100 watts from the wall 
it's still something to, to bear in mind that uh, you want to have a bit of redundancy in your power supplies as well. So that is it for the parts. When it comes to the operating system, personally I recommend FreeNAS. It is obviously free, it's based on Linux or it's a Linux distro, so it's uh, a fairly reliable option and it's uh, one of the most popular NAS uh, operating systems. It's also incredibly easy to install and stupidly feature rich as well. And it can actually run from a USB stick, in fact they mostly recommend that it runs from a USB stick. So you don't have to bother with buying an SSD or anything like that. You can just, you know, get a uh, one. I think it's get a two plus gigabyte USB stick, ideally a USB three one, but even still, and then just plug it into your system and just leave it plugged in so that that's your operating system. It runs off that. It's really pretty impressive. So hopefully this video has given you a bit more information about how to pick the parts that you want for your DIY NAS and a bit more information in general about building and uh, setting up a DIY NAS as well. So if it has, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and also let me know by hitting that like button too. If you have any questions or you just, uh, you know, built your own NAS, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. If there's anyone more experienced with free NAS as well, please do let me know in the comments down below what I'm missing or things that I should cover in future videos as I'm very eager to learn more about this. So I'd, uh, I'd really like to hear from you and otherwise that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you did, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. There will be some other videos over here for you to check out and if you want to support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then feel free to take a look at the Patreon link in the description down below where you can directly support me or the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links in the description down below as well where you can sort of slightly less but very definitely help support me uh, in uh, you know keeping uh, keeping the, the lights on and the show going on. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll uh, see you all on the next video.